trade back and forth. But Lucian and Rise in T1's hands, not allowed. Really, really good Viego steal away because when JDG picks that Juani, it is almost always going into 3 6 9 hands. Kanavi only has one career game on Sejuani. They want to pair the Sejuani top lane with a carry jungler. So stealing away the Viego pushes Kanavi down to the spell vest, and it's going to put more emphasis on how he can play that early game. Sejuani, of course, does so well when matched with melee carries to proc that stun so quickly. Oh. No hesitation here, instantly locked in. The Karma blind from JDG. Of course, this does have room to be flexed between both mid and support. We'll see what direction JDG choose to go with it. Somewhat ironic that it was that Karma from many years ago in Faker's hands. Regardless, the virus locked in for Gumayushi. Another big comfort pick for him, something that gives him a lot of agency in the bot lane. Often they will pair it up alongside the Tarn Kench for Carrier, and we saw how dominant they could be as they demonstrated when they played up against RNG in the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think the focus on bottom lane and getting a powerful bottom lane for JDG is necessary because, let's be honest, T1 have completely bot diffed this series thus they far. Have. They so have. So when you pick Karma this early, what you get is a flex pick that can either guarantee a pushing heavy poke bottom lane for you or even allow Yagao to take it into mid lane if they really want to pull some crazy stuff here uh, and do a bottom lane counter, counter pick later. Karma always pairs well with double poke lanes like Ezreal. So let's take a look here. They're still banning Yagao. Yep. And Ben is a good safety choice here out of uh, Gumiyushi as well. No Tom Kent from Varus, a very common pick. Obviously, Karma, a small takeaway for that lane as well. It's just so much lane dominance, you really can't be out pushed. We'll see if Heimer ends up making its debut on this one, but uh, a ways to go until we see that. Second advance to come through. No Ash looking again at lane dominate. It means that Ezreal is available, though not a huge favor. Crazy, uh, interesting test now we're putting two. T1 have done this multiple times where on this third pick, they pick a mid lane and then ban to protect it. Yagao has always countered with the Talia. They're saying, hey, you're not gonna pick the Akali. The kill counter into Azir, that is very normal. I wanna see if that is actually true. If he goes onto the Silas again. Renata is a very good answer here from T1. Very safe. So far, their draft, I would say, is just very safe. There's very few holes in what they've got. They've got a lot of long range at their disposal. They have solid engage thanks to the virus. They have good disengage or follow up with the Renata ultimate when combined with virus. They have a lot of skill expression and pick. Like, it just depends on how they ground out their composition. Do they want more engage? Do they want side lane threat? There's a lot of flexibility here for T1. Yeah, T1 are showing really good counter engage right now. As you mentioned, Renata ult so good when the team is charging into you. That Sejuani, that Bell Death on the front lines. Locking it up here with the Jin okay. for bottom lane. There's that Silas we were talking about because Yagao has not shown the preference for the Akali answer into his ear. Almost always, this Silas, he goes right back to it. <laughs> the couple cheeky hovers there. Carrier playing with the fans' hearts. What direction will they go in? We Gragas. expect Zayas to have a deep champion pool and he will lock in his Gragas. A long time comfort for Zayas. He's been playing it ever since he first joined the LCK, even in some of his debut appearances. And into a tank matchup, it's something that he can feel very confident and safe in. Again, offers more disengage when complemented well with both Renata and the Azir, along with adding to the pick options that they have, uh, thanks to the flexibility of the Gragas ult. Yep, completely agree. And I love it specifically into Kanavi Belvet. When you're playing against JDG, you're always looking to answer Kanavi. He's the focus, and multiple forms of interrupt are so powerful versus champion. You need to have something to interrupt the E from this champion. If you can get rid of that damage reduction, it does not operate anymore in team fights. And Gragas being in a row, the LPL made the world finals. A different team each time. JDG, the most unlikely of candidates. 369 cut from top esports. Hope and missing cut from their relative teams as well. JDG signed them. Win the summer split. And now the last hope of their country. Let's Need to win two in a row. Let's see if they can usurp T1. Right now leading the series. They're looking to get early information on the bot side off the map. 
making sure that the ball lane two versus two has a little bit more control. We've been seeing Kuma and Carrier be hyper aggressive in the bot lane two versus two, sometimes to a fault, where they have yeah. been killed in the two versus two by Hope and Missing. What I think is scary about this Jin and Karma lane is it does have a lot of power in its straight up 2v2 with the amount of poke and damage, especially with that fourth shot from the Jin. Yeah, what, what you get when you invest in this lane for JDG is way, way, way more safety for your bottom lane. It's double poke, as you mentioned. It's also, Jin is one of the AD carries that can start with Boots Potion. Very rare. So much more sustained with the extra potion down there for him uh, in case he gets the worst of the trades. Because let's be honest, what we've seen in this series is the T1 bottom lane that was promised. They were prophesized, they were talked up as being the best bottom lane in the world. And they only lost that title due to some underperformances in summer, but it's really yeah. nice on the world stage to see Guma Yushi and Karia truly living up to some of that hype. And it really has been in the team fights where we've been seeing Guma really step up alongside Karia, of course. You don't want to take anything away from the support of T1. The fact that he went deathless for so long in both game one and game two, his army was phenomenal. Now we'll finally get to see him on something a little bit different alongside Guma and see how much of an impact they can have in this game as they are getting pushed in at these early levels, kind of as we expected in the 2v2 matchup. Yeah. And we've seen him already with some, I would say, game-winning Renata ultimates in this tournament. See if he can... Oh, damn, the double poke. Cleanse Ignite versus Cleanse Ignite. That means there is no heal. There's no way to get your health back up. You can drop the dot. But the first take of Ignite will still land. Summon a spell-wise. Arguably, Ignite counters Cleanse. And throughout the series, we have been seeing... Flash, handshake back, trying to burn him down, and he will drop! The T1 bottom lane continues to dominate! Karia, that was magnificent! Are you kidding? The handshake right on missing as he flashes. Holy moly, predicted, outplayed, annihilated. This T1 bottom lane, the one that was promised, Absolutely insane. I mean, that I feel caught everyone off guard. Carrier played that so well. For sure, Mythic just, was caught off yeah, guard. Just as we were singing his praises, wow. he's able to find a play like that. The burst damage was ridiculous. So let's have a look back and see how he does it. Flash, handshake, root. It's just clean, it's isn't dead. it? No bit of damage was missed. Really understanding the limits of his champion. And you give him a champion that has a little bit more agency than an army, and he does stuff like that see why Carrier is so respected worldwide. Finds a knock, a decent damage. Another turret could be a bit much. Takes a shot, but it does put damage in toward Faker. Can I be always happy to share a bit of XP with a laner? Total experience for your team does go up that way, but it will slightly delay Yagao's road to six. Yeah, man. Carrier flashing in for the point blank handshake, just knowing there's not going to be a response and a return visit now. Owner is down Hope here. Carrier moves in again. Hope has cleanse. Hope has flash. Carrier going to hold on to it. There we go. Gets away from both skill shots at once. Not gonna find the poke back either. The awkward thing for JDG's bot lane now is their wave is in a terrible state and their jungler is nowhere near to su offer support. T1 know that Kanavi is top as well, and the fact that JDG's bot lane can't get control of the river, Missing has to contest this bush to make sure that the jungler has gone back to base. Now they can actually walk up and contest the wave. That could have been a lot worse for the bot lane of JDG. Playing towards the top side has not worked thus far for JDG. Let's see if it does this time around as Owner comes over to cover Zeus on this big cannon wave that's coming into him. It's a big farm lead for 369, but you're right, only in the Jax game did the top priority turn into a win. And Sichuani, not exactly a carry, though really good damage out of Yagao. 100 health left on the Faker, Oof. able to eat back in. Owner now spotted on the Viego. Is Yagao gonna be really in danger, gets away from the stun, but it does mean he's gotta drop away from this wave for a bit. And he's gonna chase him off. Yagao had already teleported back, so Faker actually, even though his wave is pushing, he can teleport right back to this lane. That's why Owner's not hard shoving instantly. Looks like he is gonna walk it in there anyways, but Yagao already using his teleport means the extra damage there from Owner is going to stick, and it yep. should allow Faker to continue trying to abuse the ranged matchup here, pushing in on Yagao, poking him under tower as he tries to pick up him. We didn't talk about it, but this is actually Faker's first Azir game at Worlds. Of course, the man is very familiar with Azir. If JDG can find a pick on a nice sidestep from Faker. Oh, guesses that Faker will juke left, but Faker holds the course. Gets away from the stun. Yagao chunked down a 300. He is sidestepping everything. How can you pin down a T1 member 
when they don't even flash. They have the confidence to juke every skill shot you throw at them. Beautiful play there from Faker. He's used to the pressure from Kanavi at this point. And uh, with the push that they have in bot lane and the fact that Kanavi coming mid just allows Yagao to go back to base means that there's a very easy opportunity to secure this first dragon. Very well played from Tier 1 in the early game. Starting to build a small gold lead. I mean, honestly, I would be demoralized going for ganks on this guy <laughs> and having him just completely juke it out. He, he holds onto his flash both times. When Silas has him so low under tower, Faker confidence doesn't burn his flash. He walks it out, walks away with 75 HP, continuing to hold on to these cooldowns. And now he's level six too, so he even has the ultimate to disengage. Let's refocus though. Kanavi on his Belveth pick. Going to go for the invade on red buff here. Take it away from owner as his recall goes off from the bottom lane. So Kanavi will continue with this little lead that he has gotten. Very minute, but is there. I do want to point out that Faker has rushed himself Oblivion Orb in the lane. Keep in mind that what he's against is the Doran Shield and Second Wind. One thing that, for those who've been... Hold on, we got to play in the bottom side. The flash away from the handshake. Caria does not have flash. They're going to guarantee the kill. And Hope is going to claim one. You can see the game now back with a 200 gold spread. That's a 3-6-9 gank. He's saying, you know what, last game, I got a lead and wasn't able to impact the rest of the map. This time he's saying, I'm level six, I'm ganking bot boys. They moved the Silas up to top lane so that he can now rotate over to mid. Kanavi is now here as well. I don't expect them to get the kill onto Faker, but great map movement there from JDG. That caught Tion's bot lane completely off guard. Exactly, Vedius. It's the rotation of mid lane up to top to get the pressure there. Top lane down to go for the gank, and then jungle comes in so they don't lose out on any minion waves while still allowing 369 to try and 1v9 again. He's like, there's there's a fire on bottom side. I want to go clean it up. Good ward there. Really good control ward. Ona was suspicious of JDG hovering in that top side river. Uh, but they will spot it out and no fight will ensue. Pretty important thing that pro junglers do on the Viego is the, the view range of their sweeper is large than the view range of someone else seeing you while camouflage. Yeah, we had the, the, the vision difference anyway, and it's like, yep, can't see me. All right, someone's there. Cool. Ward walk out. No danger here. We've now got the Herald play available. It's eight minutes in, both teams trying to fight for it. The patience runs out. No one's killing it yet. So the objective is slow to secure, which gives time for JDG to push out top and mid wave. Meanwhile, T1 are buying time for Boomat to join the rest of the squad. He will now arrive with his ultimate available. Looking at the supports as well. I'm curious as to how close they are to level six, because that really could be the difference maker in the fight, as we see both teams once again contesting over this mid wave. Five flashes up for T1. Missing both from the bottom lane, and of course, he's going to bring one his side, but he's got his ulti up. Cleanse ability for Goom, I mean, there's only so many good targets. His Herald's being attacked, T1, will they find their way in? Feral spots a ward, and they're gonna knock that down with a trinket themselves. Stolen cask is only a disengage. Ultimately, JDG do not find their way out of the Herald yet. Yeah, they're gonna restart it, try and pull them back in. Owner still lurking around with the camouflage on. So the awkward thing for JDG right now is there is a big wave stacking up in the bot lane that is just bleeding away minions. The engage. Gonna find the root. The ulti from Varus doesn't get too much more. The re-engage looks pretty good. Yagao flashes in for a bit of damage. Ulti stun's gonna land. Can they kill Owner? He dives in! And the Berserk comes across. Kanavi is low. Gets the yeah. out, And he goes one for one. Looking for a bit more now. Yagao is in the front line. Already the Sejuani is dead. Faker flashes. Ignite kills him. And Hope is safe in the wings. But the CC is too good. Yagao will die. Delivers himself the death. Fourth shot. Not quite the kill. Karma can't get it either. Sidestep in the last shot just barely. Gumayushi still oh. safe. Gumayushi still firing. Slowed down, but without mana cannot secure a kill. Wow, I, I, what a crazy fight. Every single member walking away on such low health bars, but Guma continues to be clean, sidestepping everything, but T1 walk away the victors of the fight as JDG secure themselves the Herald. I love it because even though the kills were close, we burn away all the flashes. Look at this, flash initiation for Guma, but Hope has cleanse. So he just cleanses and walks out. Then they go for the turnaround off of the knockup onto Guma. They're trying to get back to this flashless carry, but they get the Sejuani ultimate here onto Owner. He ults back in towards 
this Rift Herald as 369 picks it up and walks out. Bailout allows them to continue the fight, but he's so tanky and trying to move it through. Faker in the back line. Flashes away, still has the Ignite on him though, so burns down anyway. It's just the other side of the fight was fluff so much, and Yagao gives this one over. Guma now, no mana after this arrow, but he's got auto attacks to push them off, and the flash from Hope also being burned like a matador oh, dodging that Gragas. Zayus split because his passive popped on Body Slam. He was dead the fourth shot. Somehow Hope was like, this might not kill. I got to flash the Body Slam that could have landed on me. Somehow was right about that one. He lived with a sliver of health. The, the thing that got me about that fight was in the replay, seeing Faker just glide into the back yeah. line, and he just looked at the AD carry, and both ultimates were just in this really awkward position. Uh, but at the end of the day, T1 walk away as the victors of the fight. And again, huge credit to Gumiushi. He's been involved in every single kill alongside his support. That's another dragon secured for T1. Similar to last game, we find themselves with control over these early objectives. But how can JDG now use this early Herald to gain an advantage over T1. Well, right now it's two, no, three plates left from the top side. Because now was given the gold in the previous game on Renekton. Now on Sejuani, still again, not a carry champ. You'd love to see him get it somewhere else, but I guess it'll be shared by Kanabi. He's actually going to take his share of the gold. See if can be a big enough carry. Certainly 369 is up in farm, but will that matter enough? Yeah, we're seeing it again and again. JDG trying to have Kanavi and 369 carry these games because T1's bottom lane is just relentless. Again, this Rift Herald used on top side does get a pretty high value secondary charge, but bottom lane is kind of Flash stunned. Varus can't land on himself, though, forcing the Flash out of missing. He will stay alive, trading flashes with the opposing jungler. But with the wave thinning out, they're not going to get much more than this damage. The plate itself will not drop. Hope wants his fourth shot, can't quite get it. There we go, Guma takes the trade. And with Varus ulti on, there's a chance they find that kill. They gotta block the shots, they will do so. The shields come out as well for the support. Get away from the deadly flourish. Well played by T1 to get away unscathed, but you can see the biggest difference between this game and the last two. There's no Faker. Faker on the rise, roaming to bot lane to create this four-man stack dive, made it so much harder for Hope and Missing to weather the storm. But in a three versus two, with the karma, with the additional shields and mobility that they have, it's that much safer compared to what we saw before, which means that they hold on to their tower, and JDG have now accrued an ever so slight gold advantage while not having their AD carry be put behind in the same way. Yeah, this is a much different style of comp from T1 this time around. Tank on the top side for Zayus, scaling, team fight carry mage for Faker this time around. A lot less roaming, a lot of less of those chaotic, scrappy plays building up for a little bit more of the front to back. But we've already seen crazy things like Guma flashing forward to go for the Varus initiation as well. And it's only a 200 gold lead between the two AD carries. You have to feel bad for missing, trying his best to get level six, now does have it, but has been losing out a lot on XP. His owner now getting bullied out by 369. I don't expect it much more to come off the back of this. We kind of turn our attention to objectives as an oh, ultimate comes down. Oh, catches them both, has to cleanse, still four shots, his teammate has to get away from Vera Salty, and missing will die. Round two isn't good enough, he's running out of a tower. Guma gets the shot! Kill. This T1 bottom lane don't miss. Hiding the ultimate over the wall. Carrier zones them off and then they still walk right back into it. T1 obliterating this bottom lane. It's just too clean from the T1 bot lane. Absolute destruction in the isolated 2v2. They will secure another tower and all of a sudden, ooh, 369 in the mid lane. Gonna find the stun, a whole lot of damage. A shuffle buys a second. The shield survives a bit long. But 369 still drops, and Viego is ready to claim a couple of corpses. It's not going to come through for you, Gao. Ignite will not kill Zayas, and T1 are winning everywhere. Faker is just so good. The fact that he could get that ultimate out at the last second to set up for Ona and Zayas to turn it around. T1 find three kills, and they will hold on to the gold lead. Faker always looking for the turnaround play. He does not panic and try and ult them away from him. With his dying breath, ults them into the tower, tells the rest of the members of T1, you've got this, you can pick up the kills. I will die for this. Here it is, Caria around with the control ward you see up in the river, able to get the ultimate off. 
right over the wall here. And then Hope walking right there. Does have to cleanse it as well. And they go from missing first. Full confidence with the fully stacked lethal tempo and the passive from Varus. Insane attack speed from him. Blows him up. And the tower management was so good as well. Look, so much thrown onto Faker, the chain CC. Oh. But he gets that ultimate off just underneath the tower. And he buys a little bit of time, but we're back into the action. You try the five on five now for the Rift Herald. We've got a full item and a half here on the Guma Yushi. Gonna feel comfortable on this Varus. The team fight it out. Gale Force is to the side. Patience about to run out. They can get the last shot and try for it. 1200 HP. The spike comes through clean on the JDG side. It is engaged for T1, but will it be enough? Yagao lower and lower and lower. The snipe from Guma Yushi claims the kill. And he's gonna get more thanks to Owner. He plays the mid laner better than Yagao does. Bolts in for a bit more, forcing out the flash. But Faker does not care. Only one man is left alive. T1 do it again, and Faker's not done. No second wasted. Teleports to the bottom lane to immediately take four from JDG. Unbelievable team fight from T1. The start of the fight looked promising for JDG, but this early game is snowballing out of control, and it is off the back of this bot lane and the man in the mid lane, Faker, as he looks to return to the World Finals once more. It is beautiful to see the two generations of League Gods on T1 play together. Look at this. They don't get the smite, but Faker has so much damage here with the Azir moving forward, and Owner goes for the reset. Guma firing off the snipe, nails the first kill for him, so then Owner gets that body, jumps forward, picks up the Silas, and chases down the rest of them. Faker goes with the short route on the inside, flashes over into the walls for the angle. Beautiful play from Faker. And while he has not played Azir at Worlds yet, you can see that he is still a master at the champion. The cheers from Zeus as the ulti comes it. through. Another 369 finds death number four with the re engage from Belbeth. It's almost enough, but it is not. Faker in the mid lane. The unkillable Demon King rebuilds his throne with the skulls of his enemies. A five for one and a dragon after. JDG are completely. 18 minutes into the game, T1 are playing with nothing but confidence as they rip apart the last hope of the LPL. Baker's never been eliminated by an LPL team and he sure as hell is not going to start today. What an incredible performance. T1 seem to have only gotten better and better from game to game. JDG have put up a strong fight, but here in game four, it is nothing but the T1 show. And we have to give so much credit. We sing the praises of Faker, we sing the praises of Gumayushi, but Carrier's ultimates have been unbelievable in these team fights, hitting three, four, five members consistently. And the plays that he has been making in the two versus two, he has been involved in 15 of the 18 kills. Absolute beast for sure. Here's a look at the engage, and they is immediately they go straight for frontline. They knock back the Sejuani, and because of the comp this time around, it's easy for them to finish that out. Faker then oh. goes around the back. Nobody's getting out of here. And it's like Faker from the back, Kumiyushi from the left, Ona from the front. They're being flanked when they just shouldn't be. The focus on his face. He knows that this game is his. Gonna find an engagement in the tower. Owner, though, able to get away with his ulti, staying alive. Still has the flash. Good damage to the front side, though. They could kill Zeus. They could go for more. Here comes the Berserk. And even JDG is gonna kill JDG. The T1 reinforcements arrive. And it's a 4 nothing. They can't even kill off the Grog as he was so low under tower. Almost goes down, heals off his passive, then gets the bailout from Caria, my goodness, this T1 team, they are marching straight towards finals. I respect the resilience of JDG. They are doing everything in their power to come back into this game, but T1 are just too strong. They will secure a Baron on spawn, and they're looking to make their way back to the World Finals.
Here's a look at the attempt this time. They try and burst on Owner. He ultimates away. They kite through, and then they turn their sights. Next closest target. Burn down the Gragas. See, let's get slow, low. But Caria, with the old flash over the wall, hits them with the back line, comes in, and Guma can find the snipe set up with his ultimate as well. Cleaning house, oh. even getting the bailout for saves. This team is just so Carrier. good. Uh, what an ultimate once again from Carrier. And yeah. JDG know there's little that they can do to turn this game around. He had the perfect setup that he is. You were talking about it. There's a reason this kid from the very beginning, support prodigy, got rookie of the year and was such a highly prized pickup for T1. But Guma, the bailout will buy a second. Oh, the final kill. They should still knock him down, but it was close. Hope that a point on HP himself. He almost makes it too. That will be his first death of the game. But still, 19 KDA here in game four. This bot lane continues to be incredible. And T1 still in firm control. <laughs> this will buy JDG a little bit of time, but not that much. If we draw our attention to the bot lane, we can see Faker pushing in this wave, securing another tower for T1. The next dragon spawns in about a minute and 40, and T1 are going to want to do as much damage as they can. 369 putting out the TES flare a few years ago, made it to the world semifinals, lost to Suning in the uh, first world of the last four years that the LSK actually won, that was Dom won. And now at the same spot he was, semifinals, but staring to the barrel of T1, closing out the series. Yeah, he got a lot of flack because of that TES team and dropping out, but had such a big resurgence this year. Let's see if they can pull it off. They teleport flank. He is behind Faker and the rest of JDG in front. Slow but not a route. One through for the car, but not going to be enough. Shuffling back in. Kanavi taking for a bit. It's a one for one. Faker drops, but Owner is now on Velvet. Owner is going to find another kill and go in for a whole lot more. Yagao stuck in place. Stolen Fragments will be not going to matter. And Zeus is here to chase down Karma. Three, six, nine, drops. Missing, drops. And T1 once again. Bathe Summoner's Rift in the blood of their enemies. 29 to 7. You wanted more than one kill a minute? Just T1 have that mark. Has to go for the top lane. Ace after ace after ace. T1 is unstoppable. There is nothing that can stand in their way and return to the pedestal with which they made their name. T1 is looking to cement themselves even further as the legend among legends. A League of Legends movie in the making. All right, here's the attempt on Faker's life, though, from JDG. They never give up. They always are trying to pick off somebody, and they, in the end, trade one for one. They get the kill, but guess what? T1 are too far ahead, and Owner getting these resets. As soon as the rest of the team gets here, they're so outmatched in items. It's just a bloodbath. Owner making this champ look a broken again. Ulting to catch him out, no one left alive as Zeus is able to ch chase down the Karma as well. And you can see the idea from JDG, which is we have to yes. find a pick, we have to find something. We're too far behind, we need shutdown gold, we need anything that can buy us time to get back into this game. But every single time it is T1 not allowing them that Hell window, yes. as T1 once again look for a pick. Not gonna find it just yet, but this time it might be to close the game out. T1 came into the series. They had only won one game slower than 30 minutes. They were swamping hard and fast. And now 24 minutes in, just about closing the loop here, trying to find the backline access. Kanavi cannot get in. Gragas only sends them back out. JDG, a brief respite, but only for a moment as Faker takes down Yagao. Gumayushi secures the kill, but it was still the doing of the mid laner, the greatest of all time. 10 years in his career, Five years since Ruler kicked him out in the finals. And tomorrow we may see him rematch that man for his fourth title. The Nexus turrets fall. T1 back to the finals for the first time in five years. And a team full of homegrown, home scouted talent. And a stomping game for a breeding over JDG. What an arc for this T1 team as well. Gaining power in their ascent towards the finals.
every member performing, every member stepping up. The expectations coming into this series was that it would be the battle of top lane gods, 369 versus Zayas. But it really all became about the bot lane, two versus two, Kumayushi in these fights, and carry alongside him, continue to dominate. An unbelievable performance from T1. This team fell short in the finals of LCK Summer, and there were question marks around them. But here at the World Championship, they have done nothing but gain momentum, improve, and dominate on the world stage. You can't attack any area of T1. Faker dodging skill shots, not even blowing his flash, with yeah. relentless pressure sent towards the mid lane. And if you send pressure there, guess what? Guma and Karia know you're alone in a 2v2, and they like those odds. Smashing you themselves. Absolutely insane stuff from this team all series long. Props to JDG, a valiant effort here, but they were simply outmatched. Beautifully done here by T1, another world semifinal.